Teenagers from Outer Space aka the Gargan Terror UK title, The Boy from Outer Space, and originally titled The Ray Gun Terror is a 1959 independently made American black and white science fiction film released by Warner Brothers. The film was produced, written, and directed by Tom Grafe and stars David Love, Dawn Bender, Brian Grant, Harvey B. Dunn, Tom Grafe, and King Moody. Teenagers from Outer Space was distributed theatrically by Warner Brothers on a double feature with Gigantus the Fire Monster, the English dubbed version of the 1955 Japanese giant monster film Godzilla Raids Again. In the film, alien teenager Derek abandons his crew to search for a new life on Earth, while one of his crewmates is sent to kill him while they attempt to eradicate human life in order to farm Earth with giant lobster-like livestock they call Gargans. The film was later shown on Mystery Science Theater 3000, Elvira's movie Macabre, and Offbeat Cinema. Topic. Plot An alien spaceship comes to Earth while searching for a planet suitable to raise Gargans, a lobster-like but air-breathing creature that is a delicacy on their home world. Thor Brian Grant shows his alien contempt for Earth's creatures by vaporizing a dog named Sparky. Crew member Derek David Love, after discovering an inscription on Sparky's dog tag, fears that the Gargan might destroy Earth's native inhabitants. This makes the other aliens scoff at the thought. Being members of the supreme race, they disdain foreign beings. No matter how intelligent, they pride themselves that families and friendships are forbidden on their world. Derek turns out to be a member of an alien underground that commemorates the more humane periods of their world's history. Their one Gargan seems to be sick in Earth's atmosphere. While his crewmates are distracted, Derek leaves. Eventually, the Gargan seems to revive. When the captain reports his actions, Derek is quickly connected to their leader, Jean Sterling. Derek, it turns out, is the leader's son, although Derek is unaware of this. Thor is sent to hunt down Derek, with orders to kill him in order to protect their mission to Earth. They return to their base, leaving the Gargan behind. Meanwhile, Derek finds the home address he found on the dog's tag. There he meets Betty Morgan, Dawn Anderson, and her grandpa Joe, Harvey B. Dunn. They have a room to rent, and Derek inadvertently becomes a boarder. When Betty's boyfriend, reporter Joe Rogers, Tom Grafe, cannot make their afternoon date, Derek tags along with Betty. He shows the tag to Betty, who recognizes it immediately. Derek takes her to the place where the spaceship landed and shows her Sparky's remains. She does not believe him, so he describes Thor's weapon that can also vaporize humans. Betty takes this surprisingly well and vows to help Derek stop his crewmate. For the rest of the day, Betty and Derek have several run-ins with Thor, and Joe follows up on stories of skeletons popping up all over town. Eventually, Thor is wounded, and he kidnaps Betty to help him receive medical attention, in the process revealing Derek's true parentage to her. Two car chases and a gunfight follow, and Thor is finally captured by Earth authorities after plummeting off a cliff in a stolen car. But there are bigger problems, the Gargan has grown immensely large in Earth's atmosphere, killing a policeman investigating the alien's landing site, and attacking numerous people. Derek and Betty go to the car wreck site to look for Thor's Reagan. They share a kiss, and Derek vows to stay on Earth. When the Gargan ruins their romantic moment, Derek finds the Reagan just in time for them to be able to escape. Unfortunately, it is out of power and the enlarged Gargan is heading toward town. They follow and confront it, having used the overhead power lines to fuel the Raygun's disintegrator ray. They eventually kill the creature, but it is too late. Alien spaceships suddenly appear in orbit overhead. The whole gang, including Joe and Grandpa, hurries to the alien landing site. Derek reunites with his father and makes the ultimate sacrifice, leading the overhead spaceships at full speed directly into his ground location, causing a massive explosion. Derek does not survive the blast but is remembered by Betty for declaring, I shall make the Earth my home. And I shall never, never leave it. Topic. Cast. Topic. Production Teenagers from Outer Space was filmed on location in and around Hollywood, California, with a number of telltale landmarks like Bronson Canyon in Griffith Park and Hollywood High School, which gives away the film's otherwise sketchy location. 
One notable aspect of the film is that it was largely the work of a single person, Tom Grafe, who, in addition to playing the role of reporter Joe Rogers, wrote, directed, edited, and produced the film, on which he also provided cinematography, special effects, and music coordination. Producers Brian and Ursula Pearson, Thor, and Hilda, and Gene Sterling, the leader, provided the film's $14,000 budget, which was less than shoestring even by the standards of the day. Topic. Cost effective measures According to Brian Pearson, the crew employed many guerrilla tactics in order to cut costs. Director Tom Grafe secured for free the location used for Betty Morgan's house by posing as a UCLA student, which he had attended and graduated from five years earlier. The older woman who owned the house even let the crew use her electricity to power their equipment. Grave shot in many nearby locations, mostly in the vicinity of Sunset Boulevard and Highland Avenue, that doubled as more important city landmarks. Grave's steady hand and framing kept most of the real locations subdued, creating a convincing low budget illusion of a small town. Other cost cutting measures didn't work as well. The aliens' costumes were simple flight suits clearly decorated with masking tape, dress shoes covered in socks, and surplus Air Force flight helmets. The use of stock footage, in lieu of real special effects and Spielbergian looking shots that replaced actual visuals of the invading alien spaceships, seriously undercut the film's ending. Props included a single bolted joint skeleton reused for every dead body seen on screen, a multi-channel sound mixer that was not camouflaged, clearly bearing the label, multi-channel mixer MCM2, as a piece of alien equipment, and a dime store Hubley's atomic disintegrator toy as the alien's disintegrator ray gun. <laughs> Topic. Sound design and score. Grafe also pre-recorded some of the film's dialogue for several scenes and had the actors lip-synchronize their dialogue with their scene actions. The film score used stock music, which had been composed by William Luce and Fred Steiner. The same stock music has been recycled in countless B-movies, like Red Zone Cuba, The Killer Shrews, and most notably Night of the Living Dead. Topic. Release and aftermath. In June 1958 Brian Pearson, who invested $5,000 in the production with his wife Ursula, took Grafe to court in order to gain back the original investment and a percentage of any profits. The Pearsons had learned that Grafe had allegedly sold the film originally titled The Boy from Out of This World, which did not happen until early 1959. He heard nothing more on their investment or a percentage of profits to which they were entitled. The legal dispute dragged on for a year. Pearson received his $5,000 investment, but the judge ruled there was no profit to share. Tom and the Pearsons, who had been good friends during the production of Teenagers, never spoke to each other again. The film failed to perform at the box office, placing further stress on an already burdened grave, and in the fall of 1959, he suffered a breakdown, proclaiming himself as the second coming of Christ. After a number of public appearances, followed by a subsequent arrest for disrupting a church service, Grafe disappeared from Hollywood until 1964. He committed suicide in 1970. Teenagers from Outer Space is included in the video game Destroy All Humans. It becomes unlocked and ready to play once the player beats the game. Topic. Critical reception. The film opened on June 3, 1959 to negative but not crippling reviews. The Los Angeles Times Review stated, What a curious little film this is. There are flashes of astonishing sensitivity half buried in the mass of tritisms. And of the director, Tom Grafe. When he stops spreading himself so incredibly thin, I think his work will bear watching. Topic. DVD releases In 1987 Teenagers from Outer Space entered the public domain in the United States because Warner Brothers did not renew the film's copyright registration in the 28th year after its creation. As a result, the film has received numerous bargain bin DVD releases.
MST3K's version was released by Rhino Home Video as part of their Collection, Volume 6 box set. See also List of American films of 1959 List of films in the public domain in the United States